I've had people ask me, is the online church really your church? I mean, you're just in front of a laptop just watching because they don't understand what the online church is and they feel the need that maybe after tuning in, they need to go at us somewhere locally. So I'm going to be answering the question, what is the online church? And in order to help us to understand the concept of what we are talking about, I'm going to be drawing a lot of parallel between the local church, that is a physical church and denominations, and the operation of the online church. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5. Let me take it from verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5. Thou is spoken personally to me. You see, because right from my childhood, I've always known that I've been called. Even before I was born, my, my mom, a vision of an angel bringing a child to her in her dream, and that very same moon, she took in with me. You see, because for five years she was expecting a child, and she was hemorrhaging for five years after my other sister was born. And so she began to pray, God, if you give me a child, I'll give him back to you. As a child, I will serve you. And then she sees, has the dream of an angel bringing a child to her while she was lying down, and the um, hemorrhage ceases and then she takes in and I was born so just like Jeremiah this passage I've always meant something special to me I've always known I've been special I've always known I've been called to the work of the ministry and in my final year right about when we are just tidying up things getting ready to begin the work aspect of our life the Holy Spirit spoke to me I think two weeks before my graduation and said I want you right after your graduation to begin a one year fast. It wasn't much of a problem to me because I've learned over time to be submissive to the Holy Ghost. So right after I was done with my graduation, I began a fast for one year, studying the Word, searching the Scriptures. And for one year, He gave me the truths and the revelations that today form the heart of the ministry that He has given to me. He says your assignment is twofold. Number one, I want you to draw men to me. I want you to draw souls to me. That is the um, evangelism, winning of souls. And then number two, I want you to teach them. I want you to teach them to love me for who I am and not for what they can get from me. So that is winning souls and teaching them. And he made it quite clear to me that I'm going to be running a physical church, have a physical location of gathering. And so I hide the ideology that it was an evangelism ministry. I wanted to flow with me here. I had an idea of an evangelism ministry and I went about ministry with that mindset. Until one day I was revisiting the things the Holy Ghost has told me because I have a journal way of reading down what he has revealed to me or what he has said concerning the ministry and some things I said concerning my life. So I was revisiting my journal and in place of fellowship I was like, wow, sweet Holy Spirit, the structure we have right now can only bring people to you. Evangelism, sharing the word online, teaching the scriptures and all that we were doing. We are only fulfilling the first part of the assignment. So I said, Lord, how are we going to fulfill the second aspect of helping these people grow or discipling your people if we don't have a lookout base where they can come and hear the word steadily? And it was in this place of the fellowship, this is around 2007 to 2018, that the Holy Ghost buried what, what we call our online church. And he said to me, and I'm paraphrasing here, he said, I've given you a church without walls. The internet is your world. Your website is your church. Think differently. And suddenly I could see things in a different light. This was the birth of the online church at a time and at a period when church was associated with a physical gathering. At the time period, people could not see church services beyond a physical gathering. This was the revelation he gave to me. And so we began During this COVID period. We've seen an increase, as it were, of online churches or churches having to take their services online so that the people can connect and so the people can see fellowship despite the restrictions that have been imposed on the world by the COVID-19 situation. As beautiful as that is, and as much as I've been achieved, by taking the church online so that people can join the services and still be blessed. 
the online church or the concept or the vision or the father's dream as he revealed to me concerning the online church is much more than what the church explored i've been able to explore during this COVID 19 period without mincing a word i believe i've been sent to pioneer the online church movement and i'm here to share with you the father's dream to share with you the father's heart and the father's vision For the local churches or the physical churches that we know, they are located in a physical place and they try to reach their physical environment, sharing our tracks, evangelism, supporting each other, having cell fellowships and cell groups and gathering together on Sundays and worshiping and praying together, having service groups because being part of the church is not just about receiving but it's also about giving because the scripture says that the body edifies himself by that which every joint supplies and so the online church also is beyond just joining in a service and hearing the word and giving your offering and giving your tithe online but it's everything that a physical church is but domiciled on the internet i want to read the statistics to you as I begin to talk about the online church. In Africa, by 31st of May this year, 2020, we have over 526 million internet users. All around the world, we have 4.6 trillion internet users. And the amazing thing is that amount of, the, of internet users from the year 2000, 2000 to the year 2020 Within the space of 20 years, we've had a growth of 11,567% in Africa. The number of internet users in Africa did not just double, but it became 11,567% what it was in the year 2000. This shows us how the, the, the number of internet users are growing every day. And oftentimes I've heard people talking about how, uh, and sharing pictures of people standing side by side and instead of interacting with each other, they are all on their mobile devices. And each one is connected to the internet, browsing, or, and they're not actually talking to each other. And some may see this as a problem, but I see this as an advantage for the spread of the gospel. And I'm here to help you see the Father's vision and the Father's idea for this season especially as it concerns the online i want to think about this again a growth just in africa a growth of 11,567 percent and the number of internet users as of may the 31st 2020 526 million people a physical church is limited by the people it can reach physically for example, if a church is located in Nigeria, it cannot physically reach people that are in other countries. Unless it's located physically in that place, then it can reach those people. But now we are talking about a church without walls. And just as the church, the local church, hosts their services or have their services, gathering together, praying together, worshiping together, and hearing the word of God together, just the beauty of fellowship with the saints. So also the online church, the place of gathering is the, 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 our website, is our meeting, um, online meeting platform or the video conferencing platform. I'm not, and I'm not just talking about streaming a church service because the difference between now just streaming a church service and being part of what the Father is describing, which is the online church service, is this. When you stream a service, you are watching a service unfold before you. But when you are part of our interactive service, our interactive service, you can hear the next person praying. There's just something beautiful and amazing about when you're praying. You can hear someone else praying and you are praying together. Though you're physically separate yet, you are united together. And you're worshipping and you can hear the other person worshipping. And it's not just you wash, watching someone worship and trying to join them. But it's now a collective worship. Each one voice creating a beautiful medley unto the Lord. And so now you're not just alone in a room or in a place watching a service unfold. And trying to follow along. But now you are part of a group worship. You're part of a group prayer. 
You're a part of a group connection, as it were, to the Word of God. And as questions are asked, you can ask a question, you can interact, not just typing something, but now be hearing and being heard. Talking about reaching out to your word evangelism. And usually local church creates flyers or, or yes, create flyers and tracts and you go out and try to hand to people and you try to talk to the people around you, try to tell them about Jesus and the online church can also achieve this but this time without the restrictions of physical boundaries and with your evangelism online and every platform just as you look at institutions and say okay the banks and you can see the schools and you see the um, hotels and whatever physical location it may be and you see these are places where you can go to to talk to the people that are there about Christ. If we saw that the internet, when we think about these different media platforms, the Facebook and the Twitter and the various groups and the various platforms of interaction, then we can go there with the gospel and we can get the word of God to these people because this is where the people are. And by the scripture says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. We have to take the gospel to the world where man is found. And each time the disciples especially Paul went to a place and he taught the gospel and when the gospel there is spread he goes to find new grounds and the internet is the new ground for this age so many individuals that cannot easily be reached because they've as it were somewhat withdrawn from their world they may be in need but somewhat withdrawn they're not really interacting with people you try interacting with them you can't really get them but we can get them through the internet through the different platforms we get the gospel of Christ and so you are right there on your phone and beautiful thing about it is that you can be walking and you can just share something beautiful with someone about Christ or you can help in the production of these materials to get the word of God to the people on the platforms in which they are found. It is the Father's dream to survival and just as the world is trying to propagate their ideologies and the, and seas of decadence through the internet even so this same platform we can use the same internet to spread for the truth and the gospel of christ you see because the problem has never been the vehicle most times the problem or the challenge is the one driving the vehicle the vehicle of itself can cause no harm but the driver is the one that decides what the vehicle is going what results the vehicle is going to produce and so the internet is a tool we use to spread the gospel but just sharing the word is not enough because we, of course on, online we just have we have things posted and people have contact with the word but it's not enough they need to be discipled and that is why also we have the platform also on our website still online we found you online so we keep you online this is the idea of the online church where everything the church is is found online so no one can say that i have to go to any location to hear the word the word is already close to you everything you need to grow spiritually is there and they hear the word and they are connected back to the online church and someone is there speaking to them they give their life to christ and then they, they are part of something they are part of the body of Christ and they are part of a group and we can still keep in touch with them, watching over them, teaching them. Just like you go out for evangelism, try to bring them to the church physically so that they can hear the word. So the same thing. So it's not just about posting these materials about the gospel and these materials about surrendering to Christ, but also these materials go with links that take them back to the online church where they are nurtured and when they are taught to grow. One thing the church offers, the local church offers is community. As iron sharpens iron, so also the man the countenance of his friend. And it says two is better than one, for if one should fall, the other will help him up. But woe is he that is alone. And said if two lie together, then they will be warm. But how can he get warm that is lying alone? God created us that we might be interdependent. And the church offers a community, a faith community. And also, also the online church offers a community, the online community. And the beautiful thing about the online community is that it's on and available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You know, during gatherings or during the church service or even during cell meetings, individuals may have questions, but because of the limitation of time, we say, well, we cannot take so many questions today, so we're going to take 
this number of questions and then other people would have to wait for some other time to ask their questions and some people may even leave with their question and answer but beautiful thing about the online community is that no matter what time it is a question pops in your heart you can drop it knowing that someone is always going to respond to the questions this is the father's dream of the online church a church that is available 24 hours a day seven days a week no matter where an individual is located you see because we realize and the, the, the father knows that the challenges and the battles and the need to grow is not something that can be restricted to time or restricted to a place the challenges of life doesn't have a timetable it doesn't just come in the morning and it doesn't come just in the afternoon or in the evening and so our preparation also it's not a matter of now, okay, I have those questions, but I'm going to write it down. Hopefully, when we get a fellowship, then I'm going to ask a question. But as the question pops in your heart, you can bring out your device and you can send the question immediately and get the answers that you need, whether it be in the early hours of the morning or in the late hours of the night or in the noon time or in the daytime. This is the Father's dream, the Father's heart, the Father's idea of the online church. Being part of the word of grace. Being part of the word of truth. I want you to do this right now. Try to picture everything I've been talking about. If you have to shut your eyes, please shut your eyes. And I want you to picture everything I've tried to describe about the online church. Just picture the physical church with its evangelism, with its outreaches, with everything that it does. But now everything is all on the internet. And because it's all on the internet, it's always there at your fingertip. And the beautiful thing about it is this, that oftentimes when someone asks a question, suddenly you learn from it though you were not going to ask that question because someone asked the question then you learn from the answer that is given to the question and perhaps you have your own question based on the answer that was given or based on the question that was asked and so you can ask yours and it's a continual process of growth and of change and of transformation and so it's not just restricted to the service days not as it's just about watching the service unfold before you but you are the center of everything just like in a local church the people see that there are the focus of the service even so in the online church wherever you are you are the focus of the service you know sometimes you connect to a service and you get about what of knowledge that was given over the people in the service because the people in the service there were the focus of the service but now as part of the online church, irrespective of where you are, because the Holy Ghost, because you're connected to the service, the Holy Ghost knows where you are. And even the word of knowledge and prophecies given concerning you, irrespective of where you are. It's not just a service where you're watching the Holy Ghost move and specific words begin for those just there and you're watching it happening. But you are the focus of the service. You are part of this service. Like I said, Father has been revealing what the online church is to me progressively and I'm sure there is much more to it and as he reveals them to me I'll also share with you and to share with the world. I've had people ask me is the online church really a church? I mean you're just in front of a laptop just watching because they don't understand what the online church is and they feel the need that maybe after tuning in to, to a church they feel the need to maybe we need to go gather somewhere locally because they don't understand it. But I think the whole COVID situation, 19 situation, many people to see things in a different light. Because after you gathered and worshiped online, there's no fisc local look fiscal gathering to still be made. And I want us to leave with this as, bring this as I bring this to an end. The church is not the location. The church is the people of God. We are his church. The church is not the building, but it's the garden of the people. So wherever the people gather, it is the church. When the people gathered in the houses, it was called the church in the house of so-so and so. When we gather in a, in, in a fiscal building and we designated, let's call this the local place, the house of God. The, that, that is not really the house of God because we are the house of God. And the only reason why that fiscal building can, as, as it were, be called the house of God or the church of God is because the church of God, which is the individuals, choose to gather in that place. In a few weeks back, the Holy Ghost gave me a lyrics for a song, a very powerful lyrics. It says, "My He is not on the mountain top. He is not in a building. 
My God is a spirit and he must be worshipped in spirit and in truth. If he is on the mountain top, it's because I am on the mountain top. If he is in a building, it's because I am in the building. My God lives in me. I am a carrier of his presence. Isn't that powerful? My God lives in me. I'm in the carrier of his presence. My God lives in me. He moves in me. I'm the living, moving house of God. And then he goes on to say, if you want healing, come to this house. My God in me will set you free. For I'm the living, moving house of God. If you want peace, joy, come to this house. My God in me will light you up. I'm the living, moving house of God. 